Hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. Today, I want to talk about modifying this watch right here to add a countdown timer mode to it. Uh, you know, when you first get it, it doesn't have a countdown timer mode. It's got uh, great modes, timekeeping mode, uh, alarm, stopwatch, and dual time, but uh, no countdown timer. Same, you know, this one here also, uh, same way. Uh, and, and this one here. So, uh, but it's widely known online that you can modify this one to add a countdown timer mode and this one as well. And if I were to uh, show you kind of, here's, here's a little um, test screen for this watch. Let me do this to all of them. Okay, so I go through the test screens and if I push this mode button here, you see that they all show the number 3233. And what that tells me, I think, is that uh, certain elements of the module between these three must be shared and some kind of base, you know, <laughs> component of the whole thing must be number 3233. So if this one can be modified and this one can be modified, could this one here be modified? There's a lot of information about how you can modify these two to add that countdown timer not so much information on here, but I did find one person who said, yes, he modified this one to create the countdown timer function on it. So I'm going to kind of follow those instructions and see if we can make a countdown timer happen on this watch. Now, the first thing you want to do is make sure you've got a clean, stable surface. So if any little tiny screws and other pieces fall out, they're not going to roll away. You don't want to be looking through shag carpet to find teeny tiny screws, right? So I, I've set up, I think, a pretty good uh, working working situation here. Also, I'm going to do this without gloves on. So some people would say, well, you're going to get the oils from your hands all, all over on the inside of the watch, and that's not good for it. So before I go any farther, I'm just going to wash my hands really, really well, not wearing gloves, but just have very clean hands, okay? So the next thing you want to do here is open this up as though you were going to change the battery. So all I do is take my screwdriver here and, uh, you know, release these four tiny screws that are holding the case back on. This is, you can take your time here too. Just no, no rush on this. This is something you're not going to do all that often. So, uh, you know, take some time, listen to some music, <laughs> whatever it is that keeps you going here and remove these four screws. The back just comes off pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Now, uh, you'll notice on the back of the watch, there's a little something there. This little patch here interacts with a tiny spring that's right in there. That spring right there. Now, if that spring falls out in this process, then I hope it's going to fall out onto my little microfiber cloth here and not get lost because you do want to put that spring back in this position before you put it all back together. Without the spring, you don't get a little beep. The beeps don't work here interacting with the back of the case. So just keep an eye on that spring. Now, I'm going to remove the battery and remove power from this before I go any farther. There's a sticker on there that just tells you something about to changing the battery, but I don't really need that sticker because uh, I, I've done this before. And there's a little clip kind of a thing up here that holds the battery in place. I'm going to take a small pin and just kind of you know, release that. There we go. That's released. Just slide that battery right out. Maybe I can just push it with this here. All right batteries out and you'll see there's a little kind of an o-ring there i want to make sure that when i put it all back together this o-ring is back in the same place that provides a seal but if i'm careful now i can just lift the module out and set the case aside and now what i need to do is pry the module apart <laughs> and there are little clips right there you know on this side and on the sides there and if i just kind of pry those clips open then i should be able to split the module open and see kind of the, the circuit board that's inside. So bear with me for a moment as I pry this open along all four edges, just with my little jeweler's screwdriver. Okay, now with all those loosened, I should be able to just slide open the pieces of the case See, one of them sticking over here. Okay, try to keep everything in order. And 
Oh, there's that little spring I talked about. So I'm going to make sure I keep that. And then, okay, it's just a little tight and tricky, but I'm able to get this off just very carefully. All right. And try and make sure that I keep all the pieces straight. And right here, turning this over, I'm going to find the place where I need to remove a little, little dab of solder. And it's actually, it's right there. If I had a really small soldering iron, I could just, uh, you know, heat that up and kind of pop it off. But I'm going to try to do that with an X-Acto knife and just kind of scrape it away really e nice and easy here. All right, I think that did it. I, mean, I guess the only way to figure it out is to put it back together <laughs> and see what happens. There's just these tiny little electrical connections uh, right there that uh, are, there's a little piece of solder that jumping across those to make them work. So now I put that back in. Now I got to put all the rest of it together again. Okay, near as I can tell, I have put it back together the way it was. So uh, I guess the only way to, to know for sure now, stick that battery back in and snap that battery back into place and uh, secure that battery down. And now, to be perfectly honest with you, I, I, it didn't work. So I had to open it up again and try one more time. And this time it did work. But let me just show you how you reset the module now. See that AC where it's got a, a you know AC and an arrow pointing there? There's a little bit of electrical conductive material down at the bottom of that hole. And what I can do now is I can hold this metal screwdriver tip down in the hole and then just lightly come over here and tap it, touch it to that other uh, piece of metal near the AC where it says AC. And if I do that, then that gives me a full reset on the module. And so now, before I put the module back in, let me just confirm once again that uh, things are working the way, the way I want them to. If I go to the next mode by pushing this here, alarm mode is still there. There is my countdown timer mode and my stopwatch and dual timer. So let's put it all back together inside the case and see how it all works when it's uh, you know back in one piece. And before I put this module back into the watch, let me just lightly tap these buttons kind of outward just to make sure that there's nothing that's going to be too tight inside this. So as I slide that module back in, don't want too much trouble. Okay, so now if I just give it a nice gentle fit back in here, there, you know, that, that went in pretty well. Now I just kind of double check and make sure this O-ring is where it should be. And now, if I just, uh, oh, look, O-ring popped out when I was playing with it. So let's make sure we get that back where it belongs. All right, hold everything. <laughs> Listen, friends, something awful happened, and I have to tell you about it. I went to put this uh, all together, and the spring that I told you about earlier was out. So I, I tried to get it in there, and this particular spring, ha it goes in one way better than the other. And I had to take the module apart in order to uh, get that spring to, uh, to get to where it needed to be. I see on this end, it's just a regular spring. On the other end, it's got a little, a little straight piece that sticks out at the edge of the spring. And I had to put that end down and then this end up. All right, so the other thing is, the first time I tried to put the module together, I did not activate the uh, timer mode that I wanted to activate. So I had to take it apart and scrape a little bit of that solder off again. So trial and error here, <laughs> unfortunately error. Now, when I tried to put everything back together, there was no beep. Even the spring, the, the spring was in place, but, the, but there was no beep. And the reason was, I finally figured out after a lot of trial and error, that this little sticker that has never really played a, a significant role on my other watches, unfortunately does need to be put right back where it uh, originally was. And if I do this, then the beep will work. Okay, so are you following me here? All right, so now if I put this back together, I've got my O-ring in the right place. I've got this sticker back where it needs to be. The spring is where it needs to be. Everything is where it needs to be. Now I will put this back onto the watch again and use these four tiny screws to secure the back onto the watch. And uh, this time, let's see 
<laughs> if everything works. You know, this is this is kind of uncharted territory. Of course, Casio is not going to tell you how to do this. If they wanted this done, they would have just made the watch uh, with the countdown timer active, right? But since they don't tell you how, you know, I take a few cues from people that have said on the internet, uh, they tried this and this worked and that didn't work. And so now I'm trying this. And you know, I would have loved to see someone else's YouTube video before I tried this, someone telling me how to do it on this particular watch, but I didn't find one. So you know, this may be the first video on YouTube telling you how to do this on this watch. And so I just wanted to be thorough and make sure I got it all put back together the way I wanted. Now it looks as though part of this case is made of metal. So what I'm screwing this uh, screw into, it looks like it is uh, metal. I try to warn people, you know, these are tiny screws. They're, uh, they, they just need to be snug. They don't over tighten them, you know, especially if you're working with some other Casio watches that have resin cases. So uh, yeah, anyway, I'm going to get these screws back in place. And in a moment, if I'm lucky, this whole project will be over and we can just have fun and admire the results. So let's do this. And there we go. And it beeps. So now let me just show you quickly if I set the alarm here, I got alarm, I got snooze, I have the hourly chime. Now I go to the my countdown timer. And if I just hold the adjust button until things start to blink, I can set it to anywhere from one minute up to if I leave it on all zeros, that's a true 24 hour countdown timer. And then I just start that and it'll count down. It'll beep at the end of the countdown, still have my stopwatch and that works still have my dual time. And I need to go back here to the beginning and just set today's time and date. But so far, hey, look, it's working with the modification. And, and everything else about it seems to be all right, including the beep. I tell you, I cut out quite a bit of time in this video as I was recording it because uh, it was just turning into a complete disaster. In fact, I even at one point fiddling with that tiny, tiny spring, it sprung out of my fingers and went over there onto the floor. Now it's not a shag carpet, it's a wood floor. And I was able to get some magnets that my kids play with and kind of sweep the floor with the magnet. And I found the tiny spring. But boy, that was just such a headache. And I thought this was going to be a disaster. And I wouldn't even release this video. But here it is, all done. And it did work. This is again, kind of uncharted territory. I wanted to make sure I was showing you how this is done. And you know, maybe if you follow what I did exactly, you'll have the same results. I, I wish I could guarantee it will go swimmingly for you and everything will be fine. But a few things to keep in mind. Again, that little spring was tricky to get back into the right place. I had to put the sticker over the battery in order for the beep to work correctly when it was all put together. And, uh, the, uh, and also, you know, uh, at first when I tried to scrape off that little piece of solder, it didn't work right. I had to open everything up again and, and scrape just a little bit more in order for it to, to be right. So there it is all set and all ready to go. My fun little inexpensive Casio, some would even call it cheap. Some would even say it feels like a cheap watch and it's not strong enough, but I think it's a lot of fun. And for $20, uh, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't hesitate, you know, give this to a kid who wants a cool watch. And, with, and if you want to go through with that modification I just did, you got the timer mode there as well. So, you know, the, the, the only problem now is, see this watch here? Okay, this is one that hasn't been modified yet. This is the W800H. Uh, I modified one of these already, but this one doesn't have the countdown mode on it. So I guess maybe uh, I'll have to do that to this because why not? <laughs> even though this seems to be getting harder every time. But since I've done this exact model before, maybe that'll be easy and I'll do that. And maybe that will be an upcoming episode of The Good Timekeeping Show.